Right, I've, I've heard of Pedialyte when you get sick. Yeah, Pedialyte when you get sick, when you have that type of... So, I don't know dick about dick. I'm driving home, and all of a sudden, my body's tightening up. Ugh, and it's scary when you're driving. Oh, I'm making a left, I make a right, I get onto Burbank Boulevard. I'm driving home, and I feel that zzz, zzz in my body again. I get home, it feels like that. Now, I when I was a young, young kid, I used to play basketball all fucking day in Jersey. So, between the humidity... And being out there all day, all I would do is drink fucking iced teas from the little dairy thing on top of 38th Street. There used to be a dairy thing there, like 50 feet from the basketball courts. Right. And if you walk to the dairy, they'd sell you those, even too young. Nest teas? No. Not even in a bottle tea, and in a fucking cardboard container, like that milk comes in. No like way. Like the kids are missing. <laughs> this is 1975, Lee. That's how iced tea came. There was only maybe two brands of iced teas. There was Lipton in a can, okay, which was not bad. Lipton in a can is not bad if you doped it up. Again, you got to take it home, put it over ice, squeeze some lemon on that motherfucker, a little teaspoon of real fucking sugar. Um, Bam! You got yourself a nice iced tea. Did you ever try Nest tea? Like that's what I said. Like that's that was my first introduction to tea, and that's why I can't drink anything else because that's so sweet. That's what I thought tea was. No, and it can't. tasted delicious. So I was like, oh, tea's delicious. And now I try to eat it. Oh, they like... give you tea and it tastes like dick. Oh. But they got that fucking red tea that's not bad with a little fucking cancer sugar. The blue packages, it's tremendous. Oh, at Starbucks? I make it at the I house. Like you know, at Starbucks, you can make it anyway. Back to the fucking story, Lee. So <laughs> I get home and I got this thing. But when I was about 13, 14, they had to take me to the doctor because my body would stiffen up and I'd shake. And the doctor says, I'm at... Yo! No, you're losing it. <laughs> Why are you busting my balls, Lee? I smoked 52 joints today. I'm trying to recover. I think you were knocking on the table anyways. I'm sorry. No, I wasn't knocking on nothing. My hand's on the <laughs> fucking table. Why would I knock? <laughs> what, what am I, Johnny fucking to, uh, playing blackjack? So I fucking get home, and I get this stiff thing, and I'm not hungry at all, guys. And it's about 4 o'clock. Lee calls me with the studio thing, and I go, Lee, I'll call you in like two hours. And I tried to lay down. I couldn't fall asleep. I started getting chills. And I thought something was coming over me. I called Lee back about six. Lee goes, you know what? That nothing's back working. I called Esther Cool. I called Esther. And I go, Esther, we got no fucking power. You know, forget it. I, I could tell you three hours or 20 minutes. I don't want to waste your time and make you take an Uber for 40 bucks all the way up here. I love you. I'll see you the next time. And I guess me and Lee were going to do the podcast. I was going to see how I felt. I had taken like a, a an Advil for pain because I had like a migraine fucking headache. Oh, and I'd take that. And I kept drinking water. I was not hungry at all. I didn't put any sugar in my body. And I'm sitting there at about fucking 6.30. I'm talking to my wife. I got a hooded sweatshirt on in my living room with jeans a blanket and a fucking pillow on top. Of Meanwhile, it's so hot outside that the power went out. <laughs> oh my fucking God, I am shaking fucking cold. And finally, I feel something in my stomach and I walk to the fucking door. I open it and I just look head over and I stick my finger down my throat and there it comes out because I know when it's time to stick your finger down your what do you? No, throat. you didn't tell me this. Why do you stick your finger down your because throat? Because why fucking play the game? Uh. It's sitting there. You could feel it. Unless you're retarded, you can't fucking feel it that you have something that's stuck there. You're burping it. You're burping it. Now, I'm not burping food. I'm burping like an acid, which I don't burp fucking acids. I never burped that shit. That Gatorade was horrible, so that was part of the burp also. You know, you know I was going to say this the other day. I was wondering if maybe the cold water made you throw up because a couple of times, like when I've been too high on edibles, no, if no, I drink, no, no, it makes no, no, me throw no, up. It no? doesn't make you shiver like that and give you a fucking fever. Oh, no, I know. So I started barfing. In the middle of the barf, boom, I fart, and it's pure shit. Thank God I had the pants on, the underwear on from fucking jujitsu. So I went in the shower, came out. Now we all know it's official. I'm fucking sick. I call Lee. I say, the podcast is off. I'm about to get sicker. I go back outside. Lee, you should have heard it hitting the leaves on the floor. It was like I had a pot of water and just throwing it over. It was like, da, da, da. I hadn't eaten anything solid all day. I tell you guys, I eat a yogurt. I drink an almond milk smoothie for breakfast. And it's even, even worse when it's all liquid. I didn't even have a protein shake that day. I had nothing. 
I went to jujitsu on the fucking whatever because I put a half a banana in it for the carbs. That was it. I went to fucking jujitsu. Next thing you know, guys, by 8 o'clock, I was like 101. My wife had the fucking uh, white tiles on my head. You know, I tried to lay down. Then I shit the bed on the way to the bathroom to puke. I shit a little piece on the bed. And I'm, I'm, I'm honest terrible, with you man. guys because what do you want me to tell you? that You know, this is how sick I fucking was at 9 o'clock at night. So I went through one pair of jeans and three pair of shorts. But the best was I ran outside and I had shorts on with no underwear on and I puked. And a little piece of shit went out of my ass and landed on the porch exactly <laughs> where I stand. X marks the spot where I stand and do the fucking morning periscope. I hadn't even known since I went back there at night to puke again. I called my wife and said, I go, look at this. She goes, oh my God, how embarrassing. The next day we had to chisel it off. I called Lee. We had to chisel this fucking thing off. You it left was, it till the next morning? Because what am I going to do? I'm sick. My wife didn't want to fucking see it. I had already shit the bed, shit three pair of fucking shorts, the toilet. I mean, it was a fucking nightmare, Lee. Oh, my God. So now I'm up all fucking night, guys. Tremendous. <laughs> 12 o'clock. I'm sleeping two-hour intervals and waking up to shit and puke. Two-hour intervals to wake up to go... And I either run to the toilet or I have patience. I hate puking in fucking toilets. You know what, man? How many years am I going to puke in my toilet? I started my life puking outside in the weeds when I was a drunk kid. Then I went inside the toilets. Now it's been 30 years in toilets. I'm done. I want to puke back outside the jungle where I belong. So I go out to the balcony and I just barf. Listen to me. My neighbor downstairs, the people downstairs have like a bunch of... <laughs> they got a bunch of like shit hidden. And they got a kid's pool on top of it to protect it from the fucking oh, rain. Oh, no. I puked on that kid's pool maybe 18 times. And it's right next to a window. I can't believe she heard it. I'm telling you. It's like I was taking pieces at at 2 in the fucking morning. It's like I was taking pieces of the fucking pork chops and uh, and putting it together. I'm at, I'm on the podcast, Andrew Dice Clay calling in fucking live. He's going to be at the Coney Island Amphitheater July fucking 30th. Jim Florentine, my sister... Eleanor Kerrigan and fucking Wheels Parisi. If you don't go, I don't want you talking to me ever again. Tell him, Andrew. <laughs> Am I plugged in? Am I on with you? You're fucking on, cocksucker. Tell him. Holy shit. Asbury Park. That's how connected we are. You just happened yeah. to fucking call, and I said you were supposed to be on tonight, but things yeah. happened. So God bless you. If you don't go to the call, he's back in fucking Brooklyn, cocksuckers. This is big. This is bigger than fucking Hillary Clinton getting elected. Fuck that little affair. This is Andrew Dice Clay coming back a fucking comedy hero. Do you understand me? Most people don't even get a chance to do it fucking half a time. This guy's coming back with a fucking medal and then some. He's coming back with dead Vietnamese ears on a fucking chain. So. Oh, you are so out of your mind. I'm glad I called. I'm glad. Well, you're fucking yeah, ready to go. I love that you're in Coney Island. Listen, that's why I texted you the other day. Like, you were texting me, like, what time was it? Like, two in the morning? I, I was puking my brains off. I was sick to death. I had the glasses on, the diarrhea. Oh uh, and, and when you texted me, I was so fucking stoned out. I could tell when you said something about Matt Dillon. <laughs> I was laughing in all my agony. And 
you're trying to call me and text me and I'm stoned out of my fucking mind, you know, and all I'm doing for whatever reason is thinking about flipping at that hour, you know, and you're texting me about the podcast. You know, <laughs> I was out of my fucking mind. I was up for like five that morning. Let me tell you something. I, I was I was as sick as a fucking dog that night. Oh, puking shit. I was just telling them on the show why I had to cancel the show Monday night. First time ever. Well, what happened to you? What do you think it was? You sound good now. Oh, no, no. Now I'm still a little queasy. I haven't barfed the shit myself today. So we're halfway there, but I'm t- by tomorrow I'll be fine. I'll be back to 100%. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fucking Joey G, the best. But I heard you were fantastic. In fucking Philly, that's number one. Oh, Philly was great. Philly, Delphia is always the fucking... And and then I gotta tell you this, because it is a compliment, because it was from Bill Burr, and he said, what was it, at the comedy store, you know, how you came on, he goes, did you ever try to follow Joe Diaz? And I go, well, that would be kind of stupid, you know, because he goes, he's a fucking monster up there, you know, and he goes, he just, like, goes all out, you know? And I go, well, that's what you get, you know, when you have him with you. You know, he goes, I didn't even know if I could go on after that. You know, so so that's a great compliment, because I, I love Bill Barr, you know, but I know what you can do. It's not like I haven't seen it, you know what I mean? Hey, man, because, you fucking you know, started it for me, so... You know what, Joey? We're, we're, we're cut from the same cloth. You're a fucking killer up there. And you know me. I have no problem giving guys credit, credit for you. And, you know, I know your fans are listening. And this ain't nice kissing ass because I never kissed ass in my life to anybody. But when a guy is great, I just like telling him he's fucking great. And it's, it's really nice to know that there was some real politically... Incorrect motherfuckers that don't listen to a fucking thing when it comes to that stand up, and you just do it the way you've been doing it from the day I met you, you know. And that and that's and that's what makes great comedians. Because if we can't do it the way we do it, what the fuck is comedy ever going to be again? You know what I mean? You understand that? First of all, thank you. And no, no, I believe it. I believe it. There's no truth behind the act. Then you got no act, and you're going nowhere. So now I'll say what you got to say. Uh, I love you. I'll call you when I finish here, and uh, I'll. <laughs> you, you totally missed it. I, I threw you off. Don't oh my God, I'm stone. I'm just as stoned as you were Monday night. <laughs> I, I'm stoned right now. I don't, look, I know I'm going into Brooklyn. The atmosphere is going to be fantastic. It's going to be a fantastic fucking show. I, I didn't even call you. I didn't even know you were on the air now, so it's great that you are. And I, I do want the fans to know they're going to walk out of that fucking amphitheater shaking their heads, going, i never seen nothing like that. Because that's how I perform. <laughs> that's what I like to bring to the public. You know, if they're paying for a fucking ticket, I want them to walk out happy and go, the greatest show, just the greatest fucking show. And that's what I like to bring to the table. So I'm psyched to go back to Brooklyn see the friends, see the family, see the fans. But honestly, I, I I just called you to tell you that, you know, what you do for me with the podcast and the way you pump me, you, you're just aces in my fucking book. That's it. Hey, man, it. you took me out of the darkest hole in my life when yeah, I saw you well, fucking you know, do those jokes. So. Some shit, Joey. Ah. You know, we move and, on, and, my brother. And, and, and the Fuck you. it is that you can take two different roads when you come out of what you were dealing with. You can either go all sad again, or you could do, take the higher path and, and just go down the road you've gone down. And, and I'm proud of the success you fucking became. That's what makes me happy. You didn't just disappear. You weren't a comedy store guy with a big mouth that disappeared in two years. You stuck with it, and now you're a major fucking comic in this world. And that's a, and there's a lot to be said for that because I encourage that shit. You know, I wouldn't care if you came on in front of me and just destroyed the crowd. That's the way it should be with anybody 
either co-headlining or opening for you. Just go out there and murder these motherfuckers. Give them what money's worth. We're in a very stressed out, uptight fucking world. And it's guys like us that make it a little easier for people to go day to fucking day. And that's the bottom fucking line. I, I love you, cocksucker. I'll call you back with all my heart. Okay. I'm my all-time favorite, the all-time heavyweight. For Saturday night, Coney Island. He's back in Brooklyn. I love you, Andrew. That was crazy, guys. That was just pure... Uh, he just called out of the whim, and I just wanted to let you guys know that he's a good dude, man. And I appreciate his uh, his uh, compliments and his uh, encouragement. <laughs> what the fuck are you giggling about? No... <laughs> He did an error. I knew a second ago, but no. <laughs> keep, keep going went from where you told it. Cause then... <laughs> <laughs> you know that little forehead you got? 